Metro Exodus is a must-play game for any FPS fan. Simply put, this is an exceptionally good post-apocalyptic survival shooter that pairs both linear and non-linear gameplay together in a remarkable way. Unfortunately, the only thing holding Exodus back from the masterpiece status is itself. Metro Exodus marks an important turning point in the series as the developers mix their rock-solid atmospheric tension and linear gameplay with new open-world survival-based segments. These open-world segments vastly overshadow their linear counterparts and left me wanting far more of the open-world portions upon the game's completion. Make no mistake though, even though Exodus suffers from pacing problems, it still packs a solid punch and leaves a very positive, lasting impression. During my time with the game, I found it hard to put down, playing late into the night, wanting to explore one more village or gather just a few more parts to craft a little more ammo. I highly recommend anyone who is a Metro fan or a fan of good single-player FPS titles to play the game. There are some caveats to that, however, and we'll cover those shortly. Last, I will discuss briefly later in the review the Epic Store versus the Steam Store controversy and weigh in on that front. However, I see my main purpose in this video not to debate the ethics of a publisher or digital storefronts, but rather to explore the qualities of the game itself. With that said, let's dive in. I want to begin with the artwork before moving into the gameplay and the story, as the visuals within Metro Exodus are dazzling, exquisite, graceful, and superb. Metro Exodus is the best looking FPS game I have ever played. The amount of detail crammed into every corner of this world is astounding. World building is magnificently orchestrated through bits of literature left on tables, posters on walls, pieces of furniture long since destroyed and a host of other complementary details strewn about every play space. Exodus also features a day-night cycle that impacts the gameplay loop in a very important way. Dawn, dusk, midnight, all have gorgeous visuals that will cause you to stop and stare over and over again. Plus, the default HUD on Exodus is already quite minimal, which leaves the player staring at frames that look too good to be real. Honestly, I'm never the type of gamer who recommends games based on their visuals alone, but Exodus, it's almost another story. It's worth playing just to see these play spaces and to soak in the exploration-based worlds. Do note, however, as with previous Metro titles, Exodus will push PCs to their limit on higher settings. I don't have an RTX-capable graphics card, but the amount of brilliant light fixtures and carefully crafted placement of these light sources makes me desperately want to experience this game again with an RTX-based card. If you are curious about the performance of Exodus on its various platforms, in the description I will leave a link to Digital Foundry's Tech Breakdown. For those of you starting the adventure, I highly recommend you all turn off subtitles, as there is dialogue running through a lot of this game, and the bright orange subtitles can easily get in the way of appreciating every second of this game's wonderful visuals. Atmospheric tension and horror are two elements that 4A games were always skillful at deploying, but Exodus is on a whole other level when it comes to sheer moments of stress-inducing fear. While the game isn't a horror title, there are portions of this game that are downright disturbing. Seeing the depravity of humanity in a post-apocalyptic world is a common theme in Exodus, and one that is executed very effectively through that polished world-building and narrative overtones. The story of Exodus follows Artyom a few years after the conclusion of Last Light. Certain actions take place that force Artyom, his wife Anna, Anna's father the Colonel, and a small group of Spartan Rangers to flee Moscow aboard the Aurora, a massive steam locomotive that will be the hub for Artyom's journey. As you travel across the surface, you get to experience post-apocalyptic Russia in the way I've always wanted to see. Previous Metro games have been almost painfully linear in their dedication to the underground tunnels and urban spaces. Exodus lets you blast through these old paradigms and into a brand new world on a trip that spans the course of a full year, each season bringing with it different challenges and gameplay opportunities. This ties into the new gameplay loop as well. Older Metro games needed to be experienced on harder difficulties to truly get what the devs intended. Games based in survival and stealth, 
Exodus is no different. Stealth always is the optimal route and avoiding combat as much as possible is a big focus throughout the game, usually because you are outmanned and outgunned and resource starved, always on the edge of destruction. And it works so well in the new open world segments. Just like in Fallout or Metal Gear Solid 5, you'll often come across landmarks, places of interest like abandoned warehouse, an old nuclear disposal facility hidden in a cave, treetop bases, lighthouses, and many more areas that then seamlessly lead Artyom into a series of objectives. And this is where the beauty and the freedom of Exodus is illuminated to the player. These different scenarios and gameplay play spaces give total freedom to you on how you want to approach the situation. Do you want to go in guns a blazing, shooting everyone in sight, possibly alerting more guards, and getting yourself into some sticky situations? Or perhaps do you wait until the dead of night, take out the lights and go for the stealthy approach? Every encounter can play out half a dozen different ways and the level design is brilliant in these open world spaces. Every base has multiple ways that you can sneak in, assault it, turn the power off, hit the explosive barrels. It's done so well that it feels like perfect emergent gameplay and the sense of satisfaction of sneaking through a base littered with guards flawlessly going undetected is wonderful and very addictive. The gun Gameplay is rock solid too, with every weapon delivering a satisfying experience, yet rooted very much in realism. You can customize every single weapon at your workbench, and as you go through your journey, you'll need to do this to build the right kit for the right situation. Spend too much time in the mud or the dirt or sandstorms and your weapons will get dirty, causing them to jam and misfire more often. You'll need to be very careful and clean the weapons regularly if you're planning on assault-based approaches. In one sequence earlier on, I encountered a large warehouse with a dozen men that were guarding it. I needed a particular key from around this area, but just happened upon this compound while I was exploring. After surveying the guard patterns, I determined it was best to wait for nightfall. So I found a small bunker nearby, cleaned my weapons, made some ammo and gas filters, and waited for night. I found a second story entrance and began infiltrating the building. Small cans hung from the ceilings, placed there by the guards to alert them of my presence. I carefully took these down while guards weren't looking. I shot out the light fixtures with my silenced pistol that I prepared the previous evening. Then while creeping across the rafters, a floorboard creaks underneath me, giving way, collapsing as I fell to the floor with a thud. Guards immediately went into full alert mode and I had to completely shift my plan on the fly to take down these enemies. It was intense, it was organic, and it could have played out so many ways. These types of experiences are the future of Metro and hands down are a reason to buy the game. There are some viciously intense sequences that will have you holding your breath. I loved these types of encounters and appreciated every single one. Another time I stumbled upon a large crane tower. RTM's wife had mentioned it to me over the radio earlier. There was a sniper that would rotate from time to time throughout that area. Sure enough, the sniper started firing on me. I slowly approached the base, taking the enemies out from afar. I then climbed to the top to loot the sniper. When I realized my slow approach allowed for the enemy to call in a truck full of backup troops. I then got to use the sniper from the rifleman I just took out to engage this new squad. These kinds of experiences remind me of Metal Gear Solid 5, but done kind of in first person. And while Metro lacks a ton of the gadgets and mechanics that MGS5 does, the open world segments offer you a lot of different ways to approach situations. Nothing really beats a mid-fight humanimal raid as these ghouls interrupt your assault and attack the guards. As I mentioned, you need to play Metro on difficulties normal and higher, as this will heighten the importance of their survival mechanics, and it forces you to actually utilize stealth mechanics in the right ways. While you are never starved for ammo, you never have any excess either. They manage to balance things out extremely well so that you consistently are worried anytime you enter a gunfight about running out of ammo for the next encounter. You can't just craft ammo anywhere either, it requires a workbench, and these can be scattered apart pretty far from one another, so careful planning is important. Open world segments are not what makes up all of Exodus. Exodus still has quite a few linear segments peppered throughout its journey, and these are not bad at all. In fact, having the blend of linear, ultra-curated segments mixed with the open world stuff, and sometimes even within the open world stuff, that's fantastic. It keeps the game moving and really allows for a focused narrative experience. However, the pacing of Exodus just feels off in the latter portions of the game. The first two thirds of your journey is extraordinary. Well, the final third, 
well, it feels like the devs maybe ran out of time. There just weren't as many open world segments as I would have hoped. And the conclusion to the game, I have a hard time believing that it was the developer's original intent upon the start of production. That's not to say the segments are bad, they aren't. In fact, the latter portions of the game features a lot of the paranormal horror and creepy mind-bending twists that were so well done in previous Metro games. However, there were play spaces that ended up being incredibly linear that I so badly desired to be open. I won't say which environments, but there was one in particular that felt like its original intention was for a big exploration-based zone, then at the last minute was shifted to a very linear roller coaster. And that ultimately makes it so Metro. The game runs out of steam before coming into the station. And it's really unfortunate because as I said earlier, the open world segments flirt with greatness, true greatness. It's ironic, a game based around following a train, the definition of a linear journey, you know, it offers a great duality for the narrative and the gameplay expression of Metro. Just as Artyom can never go back home, so too can the Metro series never really go back to being what it was, just a linear adventure. These open world exploration based segments are just too good. But at the same time, having that linear experience for certain segments allowed for perfectly orchestrated tension and panic based stress inducing portions of the game. And they need to be there. That's part of Metro. How they deployed these segments next to one another just wasn't paced very well. You have to take your time with Metro Exodus. There are heaps of wonderful storylines, exposition, and world building scattered throughout. But this is not a fast paced shooter. It wants you to take your time and breathe in the moments of relationship building. Exodus has a wonderful cast of characters and the story focused interstitial segments aboard the Aurora are very much appreciated. Seeing small choices you make on your journey impact the characters is also pretty cool. Side note though, I got the bad ending and I didn't even know there were options that could lead to a bad ending. I would wager that most players upon their first completion will get the bad ending without even knowing what objectives they missed. That's never a great feeling. So the game could have communicated better these missable moments as I thought I did everything I could have on my journey. I wish Exodus was twice the length that it is with far more open world portions. But as it stands, it is a really good FPS game and one that should be experienced. Okay, storefront discussion for the PC players. I don't like the Epic Store that much. It's missing a ton of quality of life features that Steam has. And when the publisher Deep Silver at the 11th hour, just weeks before release, moved Exodus to a year of exclusive Epic Store stuff, not good, not cool. And unfortunately, I think it's marred the reputation of a great game. 4A, the developers, they had nothing to do with it, but they get to feel the consequences. On PC though, the game could use an optimization patch or two, as hitching issues did occur from time to time. So what I'm saying is, you get to decide when and how you support the game, whether that's now on Epic, later on Steam next year, it's up to you. I think, you know, if you wait, no problem, because you're gonna get a nice set of optimization patches and improvements over the coming whatever. But if you really wanna play it, go for it, man. You guys get to decide what you wanna do. Metro Exodus is a fantastic game though. If the team at 4A continues to make FPS titles, they are on to something absolutely unparalleled in that space when it comes to their survival light and stealth mechanics. I definitely will do another playthrough of Exodus and enjoyed the entire experience. Pacing problems hold this game back from being one of those 10 out of 10 masterpieces, but it's still a title that you should play. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for being patient. I know every game is coming out right now. We got Anthem and Metro Exodus, Far Cry New Dawn, so much stuff. I appreciate your patience. I will try and get an Anthem video out as soon as I've had a chance to sink my teeth into it. So thank you guys so much. Follow me over on Twitter at BBK Dragoon, and I will talk with you all next time.